you welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. This question number five from the Pure Mathematics P2 January 2022 International A Level Edexcel exam. This question here is about the remainder theorem and the factor theorem as well. It says f of x equals 3x cubed plus ax squared plus bx minus 10, where a and b are integers. Given that when f of x is divided by x minus 1, the remainder is k. And when f of x is divided by x plus 1, the remainder is negative 10k. And that k is a constant. Show that 11a plus 9b equals 83. Okay, so basically when f of x is divided by x minus 1, okay, it gives you a remainder of something. Now, that remainder is found... When you substitute inside the inside the function that you you have, um, whatever makes this bracket become zero. So if I divide this by x minus one, the remainder is going to be k. So it means if I substitute one into this function, the remainder is going to be k. That's what that means. And if I if I substitute whatever makes this bracket zero into this function, the remainder is going to be negative ten k. So if I take negative 1 and, and substitute into the, into the same function above, I'm going to end up with negative 10k. Okay, so let's see what happens when we do this. When we substitute 1 into this function, we're going to get 3 times 1 cubed plus a times 1 squared plus b times 1 minus 10, and that's going to equal k. Okay, so that will simplify to 3 plus a plus b minus 10. Okay, let me just make a bit of space here. That will simplify to 3 plus a plus b minus 10 equals k. So we could say a plus b minus 7 equals k. So let's say a plus b equals k plus 7. And then if we have f minus 1 equals minus 10k, that means when I substitute instead of x minus 1, so it will be 3 times minus 1 cubed plus a times minus 1 squared plus b times negative 1 minus 10, that's going to give me negative 10k. So I, ha I can make another equation. This is going to be negative 3 plus a, because the negative 1 squared is positive 1, minus b minus 10 equals negative 10k. So I end up with a minus b minus 13 equals negative 10k. So I can say a minus b equals 13 minus 10k. Or well, let me write it the same way as that. That's negative, negative 10k plus 13. Negative 10k plus 13. Okay, that's two equations I've got here. Equation 1 and equation 2. So I have a plus b equals k plus 7. And I have a minus b equals minus 10k plus 13. Let me write that a bit clearer. It looks like a b there, doesn't it? Plus 13. Okay, so these are the two equations that I have. Okay, which I can solve them simultaneously, but it seems like I want to show that 11a plus 9b equals 83. So what I have in the equation I want to show is I have no k's in it, and here I have k's in it. So let's try to eliminate the k. So if I take the first equation and multiply it by 10, the k, this k will become 10, and then I can eliminate. So, But I have to multiply the whole of this equation by 10, so I end up with 10a plus 10b equals 10k plus 70. Now, to eliminate the k's, I need to add these two equations together. So if I, if I add these two equations together, I'm going to get 11a plus 9b equals the k's will disappear, I'll have 83. And I think that's what we had to show. Yep, that's it. Okay, so it comes out to be quite simple, actually. 11a plus 9b equals 83. You just form the two equations using the factor theorem. Okay, when something is divided by x minus 1, the remainder is k. It means when you substitute 1 into the function, whatever makes this bracket 0 into the function, you're going to get a remainder of 
k and when x equals minus x equals uh, when you go x plus one divided the function divided by x plus one remains negative 10k means when you substitute x equals negative one whatever makes this bracket zero into the function you get negative 10k using those two we form these two equations and from those two equations we eliminate the k and we've got exactly what we're asked to find okay so we have 11a plus b equals 83 now what we're going to do next is we're going to do part b now part b says given also that 3x minus 2 is a factor of f of x find the value of a and the value of b okay so we have the function f of x equals 3x cubed plus ax squared plus bx minus 10 from the last from part a um, and we also have the equation that we were asked to show so if 3x minus 2 is a factor of f of x that means whatever makes this bracket zero okay when you substitute into this function it's going to give you zero as your result when something's a factor of a um, you know this uh, equation or this expression substituting what makes that factor become the bracket with the factor in becomes zero substituting that value into the function will give you um, zero the remainder will be zero basically we have, we have a remainder of zero that means that is a factor of the function when there's a remainder that's not zero then it's not a factor so now what makes this what value of x makes this bracket become zero well it's when x equals two-thirds so if I replace the, the x with two-thirds in this function, I know that f two-thirds is going to give me zero. That's what that means. So now I'm going to have three times two-thirds to the power of three plus a times two-thirds to the power of two plus b times two-thirds minus 10, and that's going to give me zero. Minus 10, and that's going to give me zero. Okay, so that gives me 3 times, that's 8 over 27, plus a times 4 over 9, plus 2b over 3, let's put equals 10. Okay, so we have <coughs> 24 um, over 27, okay, plus, or we can actually simplify this a bit first. 3 cancels with the, with the 27 gives you 9. So that's 8 over 9 plus 4a over 9 plus 2b over 3 <coughs> equals 10. Let's get rid of the fractions first. Let's multiply everything by 9. All the fractions will disappear. This will give you 8 plus 4a plus, if I multiply this by 9, I'll left with 6b equals 10. So we can say 4a plus 6b is equal to 2. Okay. Ah, oh, sorry, this is 90. Equals 90. What am I talking about? Multiply both sides by 9, not by only that side. So multiply this by, by 9, you're going to get 90. Okay, and then you're going to subtract 8 from 90, going to give you 82. So these, this is another equation that we form now. We can even simplify this. I think, um, does 4 go into that? No, 2 goes into both of them. 2a plus 3b equals 41. Divide everything by 2. Okay, so there we have another equation which is written in, in a simple form. Now we have the other equation that we were given, or we were asked to find in part a. So we have 11a plus 9b equals plus 9b equals 83. That's one equation, and we have 2a plus 3b equals 41. Well, we can multiply this this is equation two. We can multiply this equation by three. That will give us 9b here. So that's going to be um, three times two, 6a plus 9b equals that's 123. So now, if I take equation, these two equations, 1 and 3, and I subtract them, I do equation 1 minus equation 3. That's going to give me 11a minus 6a, which is 5a. 9, 9b minus 9b, which is 0. And 83 minus 123 is minus 40. This way, so a is going to be negative 8. So that's the value of a. 
And to find B, we can use, for example, this equation. We can say 2 times negative 8 plus 3 times B is equal to 41. So 3B, that's minus 16 plus 3B equals 41. So you add to both sides 16, that gives you 57. So B is equal to 57 divided by 3. So B is equal to, 3 goes into 5 1 times, remainder 2, it gives you 19. B is equal to 19. Let's just make sure. 57 divided by 3. 19. Okay, so we have A equals negative 8 and B is um, 19. These are the solutions to part B. Then it says part C. Okay, it says, hence find the quadratic equation g of x such that f of x equals 3x minus 2 times g of x. Okay, so f of x is what we have here in the beginning, um, our original equation. So I'll just write this down here. This is our original equation. Okay, so if f of x equals 3x minus 2 times g of x, then f of x is now 3x cubed plus 18 plus uh, or minus 8 because we found what a is minus 8 times x squared plus 19x minus 10. That's f of x now. And that's equal to 3x minus 2 times g of x. Now, g of x has to be a quadratic equation for you to end up with a cubic equation when you multiply it by a linear. So this is ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, there's a couple of ways I could solve this problem. Okay, I could uh, use... Um, like a, uh, what's the word, algebraic long division. I can divide these two, and it's going to give me the g of x. g of x is going to be fx divided by x, 3x minus 2. So I could find it that way. Or I could use it, I could use some sort of comparing coefficients to figure out what a, b, and c are. Okay, because I can say, for example, I know 3 times 1 is, is 3, so this must be 1x squared. And I know that minus 2 times um, 5 gives me minus 10. And the way, way we're going to get the, the minus 10 is you multiply the constants together. So I know C must be positive 5 because 2 times minus 5 gives me minus 10. And then we could work out the X term as well by comparing coefficients. But I think most of you would probably do this by long division. So I'll show you how to do it that way first. So by long division, basically you know that g of x is f of x divided by 3x minus 2. So you're going to take your 3x minus 2 and you're going to divide f of x okay, by it. So you have 3x cubed minus 8x squared. There's nothing missing. So you're going to just write these all down, minus 10. So 3x into 3x cubed goes x squared time. x squared times this term gives you 3x cubed minus 2x squared. And then we subtract these two. Of course, this gives us 0. Negative 8x squared plus 2x squared is negative 6x squared. Bring down the next term. Then you say 3x times minus 2x gives me negative 6x squared. Negative 2x times 3x is minus 6x squared. Negative 2x times negative 4 is plus 4x. Again, I have to subtract these two. Of course, this is going to give me 0. 19x minus 4x is 15x. Bring down the next term, which is negative 10. 3x into 15x goes plus 5 times. 5 times 3x is 15x. And 5 times minus 2 is negative 10. Of course, there should be no remainder because it's factor. Mm -hmm. They're factors of this. And um, therefore, we end up with, this is our answer. So we can say g of x is x squared minus 2x plus 5. Okay, that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it, as I mentioned, is comparing the coefficients. As I said, if you compare the x cubed, you have on the left side, you have on the left side, you have 3. On the right side, you're going to have 3x times ax squared. That's the only way you're going to get x cubed when you do the 3 times a. So that's 3a, so a is equal to 1, as we found, 1x squared. And for the constants, if you compare the constants, it's always easiest to compare the highest and the lowest order. The left side, the constant is negative 10. On the right side, the only way you're going to get a constant term is when you do negative 2 times c. 
that's got negative 2c, so therefore c is equal to negative 2 divided by negative 5, sorry, negative 10 divided by negative 2, which gives you positive 5. And to find the x term, uh, to, to find the, the, the coefficient of x, which is b, I can compare the x squared terms, or I can compare the x terms and get it, but you have to be a bit more careful here. If I compare the x squared terms, I've got minus 8 on this side. Now, x squared term is going to come when you do 3x times bx. That's going to give me 3b. That will be 3bx squared. And there will be another term which gives me x squared, which will be minus 2 times ax squared. Constant times x squared term. That's minus 2a. Okay. And from that, I can find what b is because I already know a is 1. So I have minus 8 equals 3b minus 2. So you can say minus 8 plus 2 is minus, um, minus 6. A is 1, yeah. That's going to give you mi minus 8 plus 2, which is minus 6, equals 3b. Therefore, b is minus 6 divided by 3, which is negative 2. So we end up with ax squared. So it's 1x squared. We can say g of x is equal to x squared, 1x squared, minus 2x, and plus 5 which is exactly the same answer that we got when we did long division. So these are this is the answer, basically. You can do it by long division, you can do it by comparing coefficients, and of course you should get the same answer. So there's the end of question part C of number 5 from this January 2022 paper. This has got to do with the factor theorem, remainder theorem, algebraic long division, okay, and this question... Um, other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that should appear in this area at the end of the video. Other questions from this topic of factor theorem and remainder theorem from P2 can be found in the link that should appear in this area. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking over here. Thank you for watching and see you soon.